I wish we can be in there. So no distraction. But anyway, we do our best, okay? So good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, must be the pizza. Must be the pizza. <laughs> Well, thank you for the leader for um, allow me to be a part of your team tonight. But I want to encourage the leaders. We have many, many other youth. So I highly encourage you to reach out to them and bring them in, okay? Well, so I'll tell you go for you, uh, your youth. And the leaders asked me to talk about Grow in Christ, okay? Grow in Christ, is that also the theme of the church? Okay, so we're going to talk about growing Christ and what exactly what it means, growing Christ. But let's pray and then we'll go for them. Father God, thank you so much for this uh, beautiful evening where you bring um, the youth uh, uh, to the church to fellowship with you, to learn about you, to hear about you. Father, the, tonight as uh, your words uh, coming down to them, Father, open their hearts, open their ears and their uh, um their minds to receive your words so that they'll understand as they grow uh, to our adulthood. Father, we lift all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So when, when, when you hear crow in Christ, what exactly that means? What does that mean? How do you know that somebody is growing Christ? How do you know you are growing in Christ? How do you know? Your actions, okay? Your actions. And there's a lot of more. Feel free to jump in, okay? This is not kind of like a discussion only, okay? So feel free to throw your ideas at what you know. And so, growing Christ. What must we do so that we can grow in Christ? What do you need to do so that you can grow in Christ? If you want to earn money, you got to go to work, right? You earn money, you go to work. You want to gain knowledge, you go to school. And you want to eat food, you go to the grocery. So therefore, if you want to grow in Christ, what do you need to do? You go to the source where the, the thing that you want to learn about, the thing that you want to gain, that's the Bible, okay? You want to gain your knowledge, yeah, grow in Christ, everything that you need to know, go to the Bible. That's the first thing. Not just the Bible, you have to study the Bible. You cannot just carry the Bible and then you suddenly grow in Christ. You have to open the book and you have to read, okay? You read. In addition to what you read in the Bible, maybe do some other research. Look, see what other people understand about the Bible. Look at what scholars, smart people, Bible people, what they're talking about in the Bible. And then when you absorb all those information, then that's how you're gonna become more closer to Christ. And not only that, listen to each other, ask each other. I'm sure you have a different level of faith in everybody. So ask each other, and then they will bring you up to par. If you are behind, they'll bring you up, okay? That's how you learn. You, you younger ones, ask the older youth, what have you been doing? What is the, the youth all about? And they'll tell you. They'll fill you in. Then you will know. The more you know about Christ, the closer you become to uh, be, uh, be with Christ. So with that, let's do a quick, very simple pop quiz. Okay? Very quick, uh, easy pop quiz. Who were Jesus' mother and father? What are the names? Okay, so Mary and Joseph. That's easy. Um, how many brothers and sisters Jesus had? This is the hard one. Think about it. Now, in addition to that, what are their names? There you go. So this is something new that we need to dig in so that you know. If you want to know Jesus, you have to know everything about Jesus. You cannot know about Jesus' name and say, oh, I know Jesus, I believe in Jesus. You have to know everybody that related to Jesus. So, the Bible said Jesus had four brothers, four stepbrothers. The Bible does not say how many sisters Jesus had, but they say sisters. So we know that it gotta be more than two, right? We don't know names, but the boys, the brothers, they do give names. So we know their names. So what are their names? 
So the names are James, Joseph, Judah, and Simon. That's Jesus' stepbrothers. Okay? So again, we don't know what the sister's name, but we know that Jesus has more than two sisters. Now, easy. This one easy. You guys should know. Where did Jesus born? Yes. Say it louder. I, I, I heard it. Bethlehem. There you go. See, the more you come, the more you learn. If every Sunday you come, you learn one thing. 52 Sunday, you learn 52 things. So younger, younger youth, I want you to come and join the bigger uh, youth. So that's how you will learn. Now, so to grow in Christ, we have to learn and know about Christ, right? If you don't know somebody, then you cannot learn about somebody. Just like you met a new friend. When you first met a new friend, what do you do? You say hello, right? You say hello, and then you probably say, what is your name? And then he or she will ask you the same, what is your name? And then you started from there. And then you probably say, where are you from? Right, where are you from? What kind of work do you do? Uh, what do you like to do? Who are your parents? Where do you live? These are the different questions that you ask each other and the more you ask, the more you absorb the answers, the more you're closer to that person. It's the same thing with Christ. Right? It's the same thing with Christ. If we want to grow in Christ, we have to know who Jesus is. And we have to understand about Jesus. Okay? So, who is Jesus or what is Jesus known as? Throw me some names. Who, who is Jesus or, or what people call Jesus, what, what are the different names? Emmanuel, Messiah, Son of God, Son of Man, and so on, so on, right? King of King, Lord of Lord, Wonderful Counselor, and the whole list. But, I want to tell you that this is not Jesus' name, okay? You understand that all these names are not Jesus' name, right? The mighty God, the everlasting Prince of Peace, the, the bread of life, the Redeemer, the living stone. This is not Jesus' name. This is a label for Jesus. This is Jesus' titles. All of these are Jesus' titles, okay? And I'll tell you Jesus' name though. I will tell you in a little bit, but I want to go with this. Um, so if you look at scripture, we know that Jesus, Jesus do have a name, but all the other names that people give to him are describing what Jesus is and what he does and what he's good at and what he is well, well known for. So all of these uh, names are description and titles. Okay, so we, know, we now know that. Now, what is Jesus' name? Okay, we'll go to that. Now, let's go to the next one. Is Christ Jesus' last name? Who, what is Christ? What does it mean? Christ. You say Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Okay, so we are just follower, right? We just go, oh, they say Jesus Christ, and we go Jesus Christ. But I'll tell you, after today, you will know everything about Jesus, His name, uh, Christ, and Jesus, what all this means, okay? Now, in order for us to know what Jesus, what his name is, and uh, uh, what is the titles, and what his Christ means, we have to explore to history. We have to go back to their culture, and uh, go to the Bible, go to scholars, so that we can learn what all this means. What Jesus means, what his real name is, and what Christ is, what it means. Okay? So after today, all of you will know. Now, Scholars said Jesus' real name is Yahshua. Okay? Jesus' name is Yahshua. But why do we say Jesus? Now we're going to that. So, in the Old Testament, originally it was written in Hebrews. Okay? Originally it was written in Hebrew. And when they translate uh, Yahshua into English, it's Joshua. Right? You see Joshua a few times in the Bible where we refer to God's name. Okay, you will see Yahshua in that. But this Yahshua is the same Yahshua that led the Israelites out of Egypt, continue from Moses to the promised land. It's different, not Yahshua. Okay. So scholar, scholar people, that means smart people. 
okay? Scholar people, they continue to say that um, the Old Testament was written Hebrews and Aramaic, okay? These are the two languages that first wrote about the Bible. But in the New Testament, it was not written in Hebrews or Aramaic anymore. It was written in Greek language. Now, because of these three languages, like Hmong language, American language, uh, American cannot say certain sound that we, we have, right? In all your names, America say all wrong, right? So, it's the same thing with Hebrews, Aramaic, and Greek. Now, for Hebrews, Aramaic, they, have, they do have the sound SH, like sh, Yashua, right? Yashua, SH, Yashua. But in Greek, they do not have Yashua. So they have the S in place of SH. So they go S. So because, uh, because uh, when they, uh, they uh, translate from one language to another language, uh, then the, the sound change. But when they do English, and when, when they do um, uh, one language to another language, they try not to direct translation, but they do, they call it transliteration, right? Transliteration. That means you get a letter from another language and another language, try to match them. Not direct translation, but match so that they'll be the same. But because Aramaic and uh, Hebrews, they do have the SH sound, but Greek, they do not. So that's the hard thing about Jesus' name. But you, as we heard, Jesus' name was Yahshua with the SH. Now when it was written in, ancient, well, re written in Greek, there is no SH in Greek. So they have to put S in place of SH, right? So um, now when you hear that, that it's not Yahshua in it anymore, but it's called Lesu. Right? Lesu, like Mexican, they go Hesu, right? Jesus' name, and spell it like Jesus, they will call Hesu, right? So, in the, um, in the Greek language, uh, Yahshua become Lesu due to the, the direct transliteration. So, when they put the uh, SH in place of the S, and the Y in place of the L, which represent the two different languages. And in, in Greek, it become Lesu. L-E-S-U-S, Lesu, in Greek. But in Hebrew, it still remain uh, Yahshua. So with that in mind, in 1611, that's when King James, he's the king. So he gathered all these scholars come together and they wrote the King James Bible. Okay, so when they first wrote the King James Bible in 1611, they decided to use Jesus' name as Lesu in that version. And they continue from there on. But when the transliteration from Greek to Latin, which is now we are using today, it, Greek and Latin are very similar. So hey, uh, Le, uh, Lesu and Hesu remain the same from Greek to Latin. Okay, it remained the same. So in the 1500 or 16, 15th century or 1600, the modern language, the modern English tran, uh, translate uh, the Bible or transliteration. They decided to use uh, Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, in pronounced from uh, Hispanic will be Jesus. And that in English we'll say Jesus. That's why today in Hmong you say Yesu, right? Yesu, Jesu. Okay, so that's how they all transfer, transfer to uh, Jesus' name. Now with that, let's uh, recap of all that we have talked. The Old Testament was written, uh, written in, in, in uh, Hebrews and Aramaic. So Jesus' name was Yahshua, or in English, Joshua. But in the New Testament, Jesus' name in Greek and Latin uh, languages is Hesu or uh, Lesu or Hesu in English. So when they transli uh, transliteration from Latin to English, Jesus' name Hesu becomes Jesus in pronounced Jesus in English, in modern English. 
Okay, so now that we understand Jesus' name, right? Jesus is Jesus. Now what is Christ? What is Christ? Christ is his last name? Joseph Yang. Christ means Messiah. Christ means anointing one. Okay? So when you say Jesus, the anointing one. But because uh, in Greek, then they call it Christ. But in definition, it means anointing one, the chosen one. Okay? So now we know Jesus' name, right? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Now we know that. And uh, Jesus' name, the meaning of Jesus' name is He saves. Okay? Jesus' name means He saves. And His uh, Christ means Messiah or the, uh, the anointed one or God's anointed one. So we're good, right? We now know everything about Jesus. Okay, so after you know the source, after you know the person that you are believing in deeper now, to grow further into Christ, then we need to understand what He has done. Right? You have to understand the work that He has done. So now we know the author, the king. Now we got to say, what did this guy do that the world wants to follow? What did he do, right? The scripture tells us that he loves the world, right? John 3:16. Everybody knows that, right? God loves so, uh, the world so much that he sent him, that's Jesus, to bring you back to Christ. You and I cannot come to Christ unless Jesus died. Okay? Why did Jesus have to die? Because so you can be removed from Satan to God. And the, 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 the cost that he has to pay to bring you back is the blood. Only the blood can pay for the cost for us being sin instead to Satan to bring back to Christ. So that's why he has to die. There is no other choice. God said that you go and you have to die to save. Because you know what? God so loved his son, but he loves you more. So today, you will have to come and pay back to Christ. Pay back to God. Every, every Sunday when we come is, you come to worship God, means you respect God. You come and pay, pay what he has paid for you back to Christ, to God. Okay? So you need to come to church. And again, Jesus only died one time. Okay? Not two times, not three times. In the Old Testament, when you do sin, when we have sin, you have to uh, kill animal, animal to take the place of your sin, and you offer that to God. Say, God, I am sorry, I stole something today. I feel bad, so I killed this one. Please forgive me, right? So God said, you don't have to do that every day for the rest of your life. So God said, all right, outside my son. So he come down here. He died one time. And one time only that we all claim from the original to today and forever we will be clean. Okay? What does that mean? Now when when I say we claim and we claim the sin that Adam and Eve did, okay? They ate the forbidden tree, uh, the apple from the forbidden tree. But you and I still have sin within us, okay? We say bad word, that's sin. Okay, we stole something, that's a bad word. But that, that's sin, okay? That will still remain with us forever. But, Jesus said, or God said, repent. As soon as you repent, that will be given, uh, forgiven. So, when I say that, it doesn't mean that, that you start go stealing stuff and just say, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It does not mean that, okay? But, God will forget everything that you do, or you mistakenly do, or somebody force you to do something bad, he will forgive you. you. But you have to speak to God, say, God, today I call somebody a bad name. I am sorry. I won't do it again. Please forgive me. Okay? Then don't do it again. Okay? Then don't do it again. Why did Jesus come down and have to die for you? So that we can go back to Christ. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Just like if, you, if nobody's know 
the way to Minnesota, okay? For example, nobody knows that I'm from Minnesota. You have to follow me so I can lead you to Minnesota. And if you don't follow me, you're gonna go somewhere else. So that's why Christ has to come and he knows the way back. So for you and I, for all of us to go to heaven, we have to follow the same path that Jesus went. For us to go there, when, when, when we get there, we will see him. If you don't follow Christ, you go different way. I don't know where you will be, but you ain't gonna be where he is, right? So you have to follow the same footprint that he has set for you. Say, I am the way, that's Christ. I am the truth, that's Christ. I am the light, that is Christ. No one can go to the Father without me or not, not going through me. So that means there is only one way. Many people said, if I am an honest person, I can go to heaven, right? Do you agree? Do you agree that if you are totally honest, faithful, you can be in heaven? Not according to this verse, okay? Not according to this verse. If you do not, cry, do not believe in Christ, you cannot go into heaven without believing in Christ. Okay? So the only way that you can go, or I can go, or all of us can go is, we have to believe in God, believe in Christ, believe what He has done for you and for me, and do uh, follow His command, be obedient. And if we follow what Jesus has taught us, then we go the same step that He went, then he will, we will be there when we get there. So, your growing in Christ will grow bigger and you will love Christ more, you will appreciate Christ more, you will be willing to uh, serve Christ more just like two friends that you love each other, right? You will now go to some random person and start doing a whole bunch of stuff to somebody, right? You wouldn't do that. But if you are a good friend to somebody, whether it's during the day, during the night, or midnight, or wherever, you would be willing to go help if he or she is in trouble, right? So that is good friends. And um, because, because that we are God's creation, okay? All of us are God's creation. And we're, because we are His creation, we are His children. And He loves you, each one, very, very much. Okay, more than your parents love you. Your parents, I saw many countries, they can't, they want to sell the kids for somebody else. Okay, they want to sell the kids for money, for food, trade for food, trade for some debts that they owe. Okay, even more people. Okay, they, 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 they give out the son, the daughter for something that they owe. They're willing to do that, but. Christ is not like that, okay? God loves you so much that you are gonna go into the hole and to die, but Christ said, God said, let me let go so that you can live, right? He loves more than he, uh, what he loved his own very old son. So because we are children of God and Jesus commanded us in Mark that uh, we need to love God, okay? How much do we need to love God? How much do we need to love God? We need to love God with all our hearts, our soul, our mind, and our strength. That's everything that you have in you. And not only that, this is the first command that you have to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And then you have to love each other. You have to love your neighbor. How much do you have to love your neighbor? 10%. 100%, 12%. Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's a lot, right? That's a lot. Who is willing to, uh, to hear yourself say, I hate my face, I hate my face, I hate myself. Who does that? Nobody does. You love you so much that you, you go to the mirror, you go, oh, oh, let's put some makeup, oh, let's comb my hair, oh, oh let's put some nice clothes. You need to love your neighbor just like you love yourself. Okay? You need to love your neighbor just like yourself. That means you learn how to forgive others. Okay? We, will, we, will, we will wrong you. Okay? Each other will wrong each other, but you need to forgive each other. And by forgiving each other, you learn how to love your neighbor like Jesus taught us to love your neighbor like you love yourself. 
Now, when you know the truth about Jesus Christ and when you understand what Jesus has done for you, then you become an obedient person. Okay? You become an obedient person. Once upon a time, when I said that we're obedient, somebody told me that obedient is like you are telling a dog to do something. Okay? But that's not true. The Bible uses the word obedient everywhere. That means you listen to what God has told you what to do. Okay? God said, don't kill anything or anybody. They don't kill anything. Don't kill anybody. So obedient. Now, if you obey the two commands that we have just read or talk about, then you will be willing to come to church. Right? Obedient. And you will be willing to learn about Christ. You will be willing to help each other just like these women and men. You will be willing to join fellowship like this. You will be willing to give your time for Christ. Because you obey. You're obedient to the command of Jesus Christ. And there are much, much more. And with that, if, even if you do all this stuff, it doesn't matter how busy you are, you have no regret. Right? You're willing to do because you're obedient. You have no regret. You have no complaint. And then, uh, and then you, you, do, you do anyway without anybody tell you to do or not to do. Because you are obedient to the command that uh, God has given to us. So when we understand uh, Jesus, then we will grow more in Christ. When, we, uh, when you practice Jesus' teaching, then you will grow more in Christ. And when you serve, when you serve Christ, you will grow in Christ. You cannot grow without doing anything. Okay? You cannot just pray and say, I believe you, God, I believe you, but you're doing nothing. Okay? Words without action is dead. That the scripture tells us, right? Words without action is dead. If you say, you know, I want to eat, and you pray so hard, I want to eat, Lord, I want to eat. And you don't go cook. How is you going to get the food? You don't go to the store to buy the food. Where is the food going to come in? Right? So, words and action go hand in hand. So you serve, right? When you serve, you serve gladly, happily, willingly. That's when you will receive blessing. And when you do all of this, you build this relationship, this thing called relationship, closer to God, to Christ, then you will grow in Christ. You cannot build a relationship and suddenly you say, I grow in Christ. So somebody said, ask you, how do you know? You just stare out in the sky and say, I don't know, I do too, right? So you need to build that relationship just like two brothers, two friends, a boy and a girl friends, you build this relationship. And then this relationship bring us together, closer together. The more you come to church, the your relationship closer to God. That's how you grow in Christ. So in closer, in closing, scholars uh, suggest that to deeper your relationship with Christ is open your heart to God. Okay? Open your heart to God and you must put God first. Yeah, put God first. Secondly, you spend time with God. Spend time with the Word. That's how you will grow in Christ. And finally, pray. Pray for yourself. Pray so that no temptation comes to you. Pray that you will be closer to God. Pray, 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 and pray. The more you pray, the closer you will be closer to God. So with all of this, I know that you are growing in Christ now. Okay? So I praise God for today, and I love... Uh, uh, sharing the word of God to you and I hope that you continue to grow grow your faith We are all walking different level of faith. So ask each other help each other uh, Share scripture with each other pray for each other and we will grow together. Okay, let's pray together Father God, thank you so much for your word, Father. As we go through your word, Father, put these words in these young men and women so that they will grow closer to you by having a great relationship with you, by understanding your uh, your purpose, your son came to the world. For 
for what your son has done so that we can be free and we can live so that your son died for us so we can live so that we can become closer to you father i live all this young one in your holy name amen okay thank you guys <laughs>